Hi, welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk business. A new business is coming to town, and we have some entrepreneurs that I think you're going to be delighted to meet. They've got quite a plan, and we're going to dig into it, and um, I'm going to learn a lot, and I hope you do too. I have with me today Diana Riggs and Todd Severson, the, uh, the conceivers of a grand plan, but uh, it's called Mac Market. Yes. And just a brief introduction, what have you, what have you done so far? What's, what's, what's going on there on Lafayette Avenue? Um, so Mac Market is a food and drink um, market with bicycle rentals and vacation rentals and um, we are currently in the development phase um, hoping to break ground on construction in probably beginning of October and then open uh, sometime beginning of next year. Yep. We'll be a little All more right. loose with that deadline. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. A big bold plan in the Hubbard Shoe Grease Warehouse. Yes. Yeah, yep. you say Hubbard, some people say Hubbard. Thank you. And they're very, it's, oh, okay. it's very divided, so um, we don't know which way it's no, pronounced. No, I'm going to go down the middle with, yeah. oh yeah, those both yeah. sound good to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're on Lafayette and a, 11th uh, Way. The first one we're yeah. opening is on Alpine, yeah. so okay. we're going to open on the new Walking Street, the Festival Street yeah. of Alpine, yeah. and then the Lafayette side will be our second phase of development a couple years down the road. Okay, this is going to be huge. We're going to talk a lot about it, but let's yes. back up. Um, where'd you grow up? Let's start with you, Todd. <laughs> Where in the world did, how'd you get to McMinnville? Yeah. Uh, we both grew up in Bellevue, Nebraska. We're from the same hometown. Um, Bellevue, Nebraska. Correct. Now, when yeah. you lived there, had you ever heard of McMinnville? Nope. Okay, then we're even. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you grew up together. Yes. Yeah, we grew up together. Yeah. You like in grade school and everything? Um, uh, what's your not first memory school. of each other? Oh, you know, actually, I had a friend. Our, we first went to high school together. We went to different okay. uh, elementary and middle okay. schools. But my friend, uh, our first day of freshman year of high school, said, you have got to see this guy. He's the <laughs> hottest guy in school. <laughs> <laughs> she pulled me over, and she still, to this day, has a little crush on you. It's, uh, it's, oh, it's pretty funny. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, she day. showed me Todd Severson across the way. There yeah. he is. That's the hottest guy <laughs> in high school. So, All right. So, so that's the first time I saw him. What do you got? What did you do in Bellevue, Nebraska? What was fun? <laughs> I was big <laughs> into sports. My yeah, parents had me like. playing a lot of soccer, some basketball, uh -huh. and, and always told me as long as I was playing a sport and getting good grades, I didn't have to go get a job and do things like that. <laughs> so you know, that was pretty much my life growing okay. up. Yeah, that's true. Camps, yeah. yeah, I was going to answer with the classic. There's nothing to do in, yeah. my, in our <laughs> town. But no, I was very into sports too. We both played soccer. Uh -huh. um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, he went how, on to How big ball. a town? It, it's a suburb of Omaha. Size. They butt up together, so I mean, it's oh, a it's okay. a it's a decent size. I think it's like fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Well, bigger Bell than McMinnville. Bellevue is bigger than McMinnville. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There, there's an Air Force base in town, off an okay. Air Force base. A lot of people so have a lot heard of, of Bellevue, I'm sure, but uh, I'm just displaying <laughs> my <laughs> ignorance. Maybe it's Bellevue, a well Washington. Yeah, incredible that's... town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. there, you graduated uh, college. Yes. Uh, I went to West Point. I was recruited to play soccer there in 2000. Um, cow. I played four years, but 9-11 happened, you know, my second year there and kind of changed the landscape. I went in during a non-war time and yeah. came out and went to war. <laughs> really? So, yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you were in the... I was in the Army. I was a yeah. combat engineer. Um, you graduate West Point. You go to school for free, but then you owe five years in the military afterwards. So I came out as a second lieutenant, uh, joined a combat engineering unit, um, 70th Engineers out of Fort Riley, Kansas. They were currently in Iraq, but coming home within like a month. And so they decided it wasn't worth it to send us new lieutenants over. So we waited for them to get back, and then uh, that was the height of when we were in both wars, Iraq and Afghanistan. So it was kind of a one-year train-up, and then we were off to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. For 15 wow. months. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a whole story right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but we're, we want to talk Mac Market today, but yep. another time I want to see, hear what that was like. Sure. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Long Man, time. So what did you do? Wait for him, or you? Were yeah, like, pretty oh much with heart palpitations for 15 months. <laughs> <laughs> I was living in Chicago, and then Idaho, and Seattle. I like to hop around a bunch, uh, mm -hmm. but I did college. Um, I graduated from the University of Nebraska, and then from there, just kind of moved around and sampled on, tried on different towns. 
And he came home, and you guys mm -hmm. got together. Yes. Yeah, my unit moved to New Mexico, and that was the first time we decided we're tired of being apart. And so yeah. she came and moved with me, and we settled in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now at some point, you got on the road to come here. So fast yes. yes. forward a little bit. Tell us a yeah. little bit yeah. of what happened in between. Um, so we, we moved to Seattle after we got out of the service and okay. spent, a long, spent like seven years there. And yeah. then um, what year did we get on the road? Uh, 2016. 16, yeah. yeah. We both ended up landing work from home jobs. We were in Seattle just through fate. Uh, and then we decided, well, if we can work from home, let's make our home mobile. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Bought the Airstream, uh, fixed it yeah. up, and And, and we, road. Seattle uh, was growing so fast, is growing so fast. It just was becoming less of the town that we originally moved to. It's still wonderful. It's just we knew we'd probably want to get back to a place that was more like our roots. Mm -hmm. So that was also the mission of living on the road was well, to that answers one of my questions find a now. new hometown. Yeah. Yeah. Like the good old days. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, um, uh, Carolyn, do we have a picture of that Airstream? Well, we'll get to it there's eventually. A, there's a bell. Oh, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it. She'll find oh, there it. Oh, there it is. Now, yeah. where, where are you? That's the bridge uh, going over the Columbia in Astoria. We spent a lot of time in Oregon. We love Oregon State Parks. We just loved Oregon. Mm -hmm. So you just you've got these mobile jobs. You decided mm -hmm. to go on the road. Yeah. You work. You stop in a park and work or yeah. something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We yep. we had the Verizon and AT and T maps memorized the websites yeah, to figure the out where service is. was because yeah. we knew from about seven to five each day we needed to be accessible via yeah. computer and, yeah. and cell phone. Mm -hmm. And there were times, especially if you get southern Oregon coasts, where I'd have to drive to the top of the hill and hold my phone above yeah. my head to get a good signal. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but it was a beautiful view at the top of that hill, yeah. so you <laughs> can't beat that. So you have jobs, but you're you're hatching a plan. That was in 16, so for two yeah. years, mm -hmm. you, you this evolved. In, tell me how it evolved. Before, you just set out to be on the road and live. Yeah, yeah. But then mm -hmm. you got an idea to do something I think else. Diane already had a concept in mind for mm -hmm. a business, and that was part of our scouting. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can Yeah, that. initially I was really, uh, we opened up a guest house on um, Whidbey Island, um, just kind of like an Airbnb uh, um, situation, and um, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed renovating the house. I enjoyed hosting people and having them have such a good time. Um, so the initial business idea was to buy some land and have kind of a tiny home hotel mm -hmm. of sorts. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so, and I guess, I guess I'll skip over to when we landed in McMinnville. I started looking at property and talking to the planning department and kind of learned about, I guess it's the situation in a lot of places where they want to keep rural rural and keep urban and make mm -hmm. urban urban. Mm -hmm. So for good opening, reasons, yeah, yeah, for, yeah, which I completely understand. So that business idea um, shifted a bit, and and then I found the Hebrew Shugaries building, and that changed everything because we just fell in love with the building, really. So, uh, and, but I kind of skipped over. How did you find things. it? What were you gonna say, Tom? Oh, I was just gonna <laughs> say. And the Alpine District and the promotion uh -huh. McMinnville yes. put behind it. Like right. all that. Yeah. We drove through McMinnville often heading to the coast. Uh -huh. And we loved the coast, but we knew it was so seasonal. And, and, and yeah. yeah, so that kind of brought us more back to McMinnville. Decent-sized town, good through mm -hmm. traffic, year-round mm -hmm. traffic with harvest and with the wineries and everything like that. Yeah, um, and just the people. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is a big project. And... and I don't know that we would have kept moving forward if we hadn't kept meeting, if we hadn't met the people that we've met mm -hmm. in the community that have been so supportive mm -hmm. and encouraging and... Oh, name names. Who? Um, yeah. Like one of the first... Well, Mike Morris was the selling broker and our agent. I was going to ask you, who's your realtor? All so right, our realtor Mike. is yeah. Caitlin Rewright, and then uh -huh. Mike sold us the building, uh -huh. and they were both so encouraging. Yeah. So that, that's the first step where they're like, especially Caitlin, she's like, this is possible. And you're like, <laughs> okay, you know? And Mike's like, go talk to Teresa at Citizens Bank. And we're like, uh -huh. okay. And I was like, no way this lady's going to give me the time of day. And I call her, and she's like, okay, here's what we'll do. You know? And I was like... <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. And she's like, and now you need to go meet Jody at MEDP. Yeah. And I was like, okay. 
I showed Jody my our idea, and she gave me a hug afterwards. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> like now I'm now I'm in it, you know. And yes. it just that's that kept rolling out. And same with Seller Ridge, our contractor. They just are so encouraging, and everybody is really excited mm-hmm. about it. You so. ran right into the arms of all those people that are waiting for you. <laughs> you are the proof of. If they build Alpine, mm. they will come. Yes, yes. <laughs> Here you yep. are. Even though you're off the end of what, just about a block off the end of what's right. currently. What's currently there, yes. yes. But there are, when, is there yeah. plans for more? What yep. year-ish are they talking? Um, for 2013, we haven't heard, or sorry, for it to reach 13th, we haven't heard okay. a timeline Maybe on that. Maybe that's to be determined. But there are murmurings of things filling in. There's another mm-hmm. micro restaurant called Granary Row. Coming in on 10th and Lafayette, I believe. Oh, this is the so, great gossip. Yeah. This yeah, is the latest. Yeah, so. Well, you guys are the great gossip. <laughs> Let's get to that. Yes. So, here you go. Talk about the building so people can kind of identify it and figure out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 11th and Lafayette and Alpine, it's this giant building. And if you're on Lafayette, you can see it. It says Hubert Shoe Grease across the top. Okay. And the building that's on the Alpine side is a big tin warehouse. Um, if you go inside, we do have some pictures. If you yeah, can. yeah, let's start some pictures. Now, that warehouse is kind of a, a buff color, isn't it? The one that faces out, um, Lafayette? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. yep, yep, yep. And, exactly. and it, has, Tim, but it has really good bones, and we want to keep the structure and the history of it, but there are certain things we need to update for structural, fire code, um, and just aesthetic. Seismic. Okay. Seismic, yeah. yeah. Maybe, Carolyn, we can come back to yeah. this drawing, but let's go. Well, there's All right, the Alpine there's district. the Alpine yeah. District. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's next, Carolyn? Oh, All right, so this is us guys. doing <laughs> demo uh, inside the building. I, would, I picked this one because if you notice what the insulation is in those walls, it's just random bits of styrofoam and packing peanuts and <laughs> bags. Just and whatever I had. Oh, some yeah. old, Put this um, in the wall. Hamburger boxes from Arctic Circle were in yeah. there too. <laughs> it's a little now, treasure hunt. Now this is your trailer. Yes. Your your airstream. Right. And it's in a state of construction. This is. Bef- it is. Yes. But before you hit the road. No. no this is. This is now. After we yeah. pulled it you in the building it. and we're gutting it to turn it into our bar. Yeah, it's going to be a cocktail mm-hmm. bar. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll cut a serving window in one of the sides and and finish it out uh, to be. So that was your home for two years. Mm-hmm. Two years, yeah. With the cat and, and the dog. And evidently yeah. you found a place to live in McMinnville? Yep. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. And yeah. that's, again, <laughs> thanks to Caitlin. She saw her neighbors moving out because we battled trying to find a rental property yeah. for a while. Mm-hmm. Stuff goes quick in town. Yeah, it's competitive. But she saw her neighbors moving out and ran over and said, who's saw your landlord? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just have to be that quick. Well, good. Yeah. Back, we really back up that last one, yeah. Carolyn. Back up to that last one if you can. Now, who's that guy with his hand on his head? Yeah, going, oh, that's good old goodness. Zach Geary. Zach Gary of Celebrity. Zach for Mac. Uh-huh. And is that you taught on? <laughs> there he yep, is again. that was me. And here's that. What's this picture yeah. showing? This was after we gutted the Airstream. I just put the parts outside uh, on Alpine with a sign, and they were gone oh, the next day. Free? Yeah. Free. Free. Yeah. Free. Yeah. Free. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So now, there, okay, see? that's oh, the beautiful. interior of the warehouse. Um, so there's your Airstream, just to give people is. a perspective yep. of how big this is. Yeah, yep. that's a 28-foot Airstream. 28 yep. feet, yep. and it's and way over there. The building mm-hmm. is uh, 10,000 square feet, and those ceilings are about, I think it's about 30 feet to those rafters. It's big, old growth, beautiful rafters. I mean, uh, it's yeah, just I've been in there. We had the Greeters there at the Chamber of Commerce, and we yeah. met there. Thank mm-hmm. you for having us. Yeah. It was <laughs> inspiring. It is beautiful. And um, like you said, Todd Bones, the yeah. old growth timbers, there's just, you just don't get those anymore. And no. uh, it looks really exciting. It's rough. And what are you doing there? there? There's <laughs> this is our groundbreaking. Yeah. Uh, when we, and that, that's the office inside of there that we're going to convert to an Airbnb. So this is just us ripping it down to studs so we can build it back yeah, up to be livable. We are, uh-huh. we, so I am part owner of a brewery in Colorado, and mm-hmm. part of living on the road that was nice was we were able to drive over to Colorado and help with the construction uh, on that, and we learned a lot about construction, and we want to dig into this project just as much as we did there. You learned about construction, mm-hmm. um, and you also learned about business. Yeah. Yes. It, because you both were integral to developing that brewery. 
We, we had the benefit of our two friends that started it. Um, one of them played soccer with me at West Point, um, uh -huh. and then he met his buddy in the Army, and one of them went to Harvard Business School, the other one went to Columbia, so and they then, had a and good... And then the wife, and then the Emily, wife she's a partner as well, and she also went to Columbia for business school. So, so they're they were, an amazing resource. They, they already knew what they were doing. For us, yes. yeah. So all uh -huh. these fancy dance brain <laughs> educations came together and did they succeed or did they not <laughs> yeah yeah the brewery is best number two best new brewery in the country according to usa today they did so, well and it's <laughs> it's very tasty um and i will they're coming here in two weeks and they're gonna brew with charlie and david over at allegory uh -huh. so we're gonna have a collaboration beer for it's called outer range the brewery in colorado mm -hmm. with allegory so come on down and yeah try that and they buy <laughs> hops from the crosby hop farm and there's just there's a lot of nice stuff happening in the region when it comes to getting your ingredients getting clean water getting yep. low utilities that make it uh, very conducive for very businesses. conducive to food and drink yes yep. yeah and those are the things that we really hope to highlight I, we haven't really talked about what makes it a food and drink market okay go for it so we're gonna have uh, five food truck or cart spots, and um, we're hoping to really bring in some more ethnic flavors to McMinnville with those. Um, later night options for food, and um, also hopefully some uh, easy breakfast to go options. Those mm -hmm. are the things that we're focusing on there. But we are fielding all inquiries on that um, if anybody has an interest in a spot. So you're thinking about how many food spots? It's going to be five, There's, and they're going to be. Yeah. We're going to bring in the one wall that's on Alpine right now in 33 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll still have roof cover, overhang. It'll still have the deck seating and all that. It'll have walls on three sides, but technically it's open air for ventilation yeah. uh, for the food carts. Yeah, so it's a nice indoor outdoor food cart pod. But then you move inside, and we're going to mm -hmm. um, create these carts, kind of kiosks um, that are mobile that. We'll also have a commissary kitchen and um, chefs and on food entrepreneurs can cook in there and then sell from the carts. Okay. That's the concept. So the cooking will be going on inside. Mm -hmm. Food goes out to the carts, you mm -hmm. buy it, and then you can come back in and sit down. Yep. 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 If it's wintertime, it'll be cool out around the carts. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have an indoor seating area that's yeah. heated. We have... Um, I don't know if you remember from Greeters, there's that mezzanine yes. that spans the entirety of the building that's going to be seating up there as well. Mm -hmm. um, well. Hopefully, we plan to have kind of a kids area to, to hang out. That's something that we hear a lot about in town is where can I go have a beer and hang out with my kid? So, um, yeah, there'll be the whole concept is to just highlight the foods and drink of Yamhill County and the region and help anybody who's trying to get started in, in that, you know, uh, arena, mm -hmm. a boost. Mm -hmm. So you're taking, I mean, your, your um, website and your, um, your email addresses are going by on the screen. Oh, yeah. So Great. people are writing that down. You're taking, you would yeah. be, be happy to receive inquiries about Absolutely. how they can play. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not only food, though. What else? The drink part, yeah. So mm -hmm. the back third, we're looking to fill with, you know, winery pop-ups. You know, if you want to come, I, you have the data in your plan, but there's a lot of wineries in the yeah, area. Yeah, there's only... a thousand plus wineries in the area, but, you know, we don't have a thousand plus tasting rooms. We have a lot, but mm -hmm. there are the smaller potato wineries giving them the opportunity to pop up and do tastings in my yeah. market. Whether it's for a day, a week, you know, a month. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also want to bring in a longer-term brewery tenant or something also to complement the food carts with drink mm -hmm. so that'll be along the back third of the wall yeah. any shops any sales um we will have a stuff. coffee cart and then okay. like a market a small market of like grab and grow grab and go provisions um kind of the stuff you'd get before going wine tasting local um, artist booths um, we definitely can accommodate them. Okay, it's I, a possibility. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, the middle space we're intentionally even flexible for if people want to rent yeah. for events, if mm -hmm. we want to do something like an artist gallery, you know. Yeah. Diana's plan is a reason to come, a reason to stay, and a reason to come back again. So she's going to culminate mm -hmm. an environment that's always rotating, always, fresh. always new. What's going right? on that's, at Mac that's Market that's today? Because mm -hmm. we love how much this community likes to gather, and we want to provide a space for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we, we touched on your experience at the brewery, mm -hmm. and you saw them um, bring together financing yes. to create that mm -hmm. and use some of that experience to, to um, 
get this thing off the ground. Yes. Now, that's a euphemism for, how'd you pay for this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? No, that's um, a good question. So, so just how did that start? You, you come in, you, you're looking at this building, you can do this. Um, the process of Teresa saying, now that, a bank saying, yeah, we're going to, we like your whole business plan, we're going to fund it, that doesn't usually happen. So how did that work? Yeah, yeah. so the, the SBA, Small Business Administration 504 loan, is kind of made for things like this um, to help people like us start up. Um, so it's a federal program yes. yeah. administered by... The Local. Small Business Administration, yes. And um, the way that the loan works is that um, the private bank, Citizens Bank, uh, does 40% 50. or 50%. They take 50. And then the takes. Small Business Administration takes 40. And then the... We have to bring 10% down. For owners, yeah, okay. bring 10% down. So the building and the development, were those the same business loan or were they separate? How did that work? It was a complicated process and Teresa's been great. I mean, from the point where we took in our plan and she proved it for us and said, you know, these are the key words that the SBA will be looking for, you know, maybe tweak this, maybe do this. Mm -hmm. um, but we started because uh, one of the requirements of the SBA is 51% owner occupied. So out of the square footage of the business we're running, they want us as owners to run 51% of those businesses. To operate it, yeah. And so looking at the full building, since we weren't planning on doing the other half until later, that was the first hurdle we had to overcome. Mm -hmm. So we started with a general- you would have had to occupy the whole yes. building. Yes, we would have had to develop right. the whole to get thing. That right. It's a whole lot of business, yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah. how did you get over that hurdle? So we got a commercial or a construction loan through Citizens Bank to just buy the property first, split it into loan, two. Yeah. Um, and then go back to the SBA and for just developing for just, the one hand. Exactly. Yes, and say, yeah. They're two separate yeah. properties now, two separate tax lots. Yeah. Let's just focus on this one. Yeah. And you're focusing on the one next to Alpine. Mm -hmm. So are they about roughly the same size? Same footprint, but the one on Lafayette <laughs> has multiple levels. So it's mm -hmm. considered about 20,000 feet, whereas the Alpine side is 10,000 10, feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the one next to Lafayette, your plans for that? Um, we've had a whole lot of ideas, um, from a climbing wall to <laughs> a hotel, a restaurant is a pretty natural fit for the space. Um, if you saw inside, it's been used for a nut drying room before it's been used for canning. It's like multiple levels. Mm -hmm. There's like an old elevator shaft. So step one nice. is get Cellar Ridge to do an as built and figure out what needs to stay and what can go before we can really yeah. plan mm -hmm. how to digest it. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the phase we're at now. So that's kind of on the back burner. Yes. That's on the back burner. Yep. Okay. And, and we're new to the city and we really wanted to like live here for a year or two, figure out, you know, what mm -hmm. the city really needs, what that space could be used mm -hmm. for. Well, and, that's and we're kind of all in financially <laughs> one side. We, yeah. we yeah. wouldn't currently have the means. Yep. Mm -hmm. Without yeah. a partnership, mm -hmm. yeah. Spe speaking towards your question about financing, we're not, yeah, we're not huge developers. We're just us. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> and, I get but it. we're doing it. <laughs> creative you know? and adventurous, obviously, mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, let's just work. Let's live out of our." Airstream while we yeah. work online. That's so <laughs> and, cool. and we had the benefit of owning property in Seattle during the big boom, so we got uh -huh. a good little that's boost true. We there had to okay. that's good helped investments. us with our ten percent to come in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say that ten percent can be um, a grant, right? Like our, yeah, like so. uh, Murac, McMinnville Urban Renewal, something committee. Area <laughs> committee, <laughs> agency committee. I'm not sure. Anyway, they provide um, a really generous loan program, mm -hmm. and if you're granted that, that can be counted as your equity. I see. So, we recently received that loan. Yep. That was so, good. the plan. You 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 said we hope by when? I forgot when you said. How's the? What's the time frame when it's going to open? So we released our designs, our engineering designs for permitting, which we hear is a six-week process right now at the city, which is pretty standard. Um, and then Celeridge is estimating about five months for construction. So we're looking at beginning of next year. Yeah, five months. That's pretty year. aggressive. Well, let's look at yeah. some more pictures. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Carolyn, whatever you. Uh, wow. What's going on there? <laughs> So that is partially 
the construction that we've undertaken, that was to split the buildings into two. So we're looking from inside the In, ten thousand foot building yep. at the twenty thousand square foot building. Correct. Yep. That's that's an, that other building looks pretty nice. Yeah, it's, it's the siding, kind of, the wood, the everything's yeah. not an old rundown thing. Ooh. No. I mean, <laughs> both, both buildings have great. <laughs> that's that's a tough one to say because okay. both buildings have great bones yeah, and easy right. to build off of. But when you start uh -huh. considering the occupancy you're going to use and the structural codes of fire codes, things right. like that, then that's what when you're... What makes it safe for yeah. multiple Okay, then you okay. there's a lot of yeah. work there. Yeah. yeah. So that was a great shot. And so you've taken all Some the tin of off of that. This, yeah, this is the insulation. Uh, oh, what's this? This the, is the that insulation was the, that was in the wall those, as we were pulling it well, down. Well, this is what we call insulation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone really uh, took the cartons. time to do the egg cartons and the bread bags. A potato, a the, bread And bag. there's the original. Uh, so that's Lafayette, that dirt road in front of it. That's what oh is now gosh, Lafayette. Dirt yeah. Road. Like Isn't that cool? Road, I just here. love that photo. Yeah. And that building has a really cool shape to it, and and, uh -huh. and we're excited to build yeah. that into something in the future. Yeah, okay. sure. And to be determined what it's going to be. Yeah. And what's that's, that's more life on the road. Um, there's this great program called Harvest Hosts. Uh, if you have an RV or trailer, there are vineyards and farmers that open up their land for one night uh, for free to camp on. And this is our cane cellars um, down mm -hmm. by Wheat, Wheatland? Yeah, Wheatland. the Wheatland Ferry. Yeah, mm -hmm. down by the Wheatland Ferry. Um, so we got a nice little spot right next to the vineyard. <laughs> oh, you traveled with cat. a cat? A yeah. cat put up with this lifestyle? Yeah. He, I think what was he was really into it. He, it he, took him a while to get used to it, but then yeah. he loved it because he knew that the trailer was kind of his safety shell where he yeah. could look out the windows, yeah. take it in, and then after about a half day of taking it in, he was anxious to get outside and explore. Oh. But mm -hmm. so he really adapted to changing. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He was, yep. That's he a new, was so you would part let of our cat path. out in a brand new environment, and you trusted yeah. this cat to not freak out and run off. Well, yeah. anytime he got scared, he'd sprint back to the trailer. So okay. we knew that was good. Yeah. So when we wanted him to come back, we'd just have to clap at him or something. He'd sprint on into the trailer. <laughs> clap and the cat would come back. There was back. one time we were out at Detroit Lake um, there in the Cascades, and he brought, remember, he brought that mouse in. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> we were like, no, no, you're supposed outside. to keep him out. <laughs> he was so proud of it. He yeah, was, he was yeah, so he was proud of it. Up. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> and then that's our dog, Kaya, who we just lost a couple months ago, oh. but I had her from when I first got out of college. Oh, she my. lived in me the whole time, and she was a sweetheart. That's, um, but yeah, that's Pacific City. We really like her. She there. really loved it. She lost both her eyes to glaucoma. They're actually oh. sewn shut, but she did great on the road, too. She'd, oh. We'd yeah, get she to really a new spot. It. She'd spend a day walking around and brushing up against things, and then once her scent was marked, she uh -huh. would she explore and figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's incredible. Yeah. And the cat's name? Mosey. Mosey, and you still mm -hmm. have Mosey. Yeah. yeah. Mosey adapted to your new house. Yes, yeah. he loves yeah. it. Okay, it's well, like Mosey... Cat City in our neighborhood, and they're all buddies. Will the cat come to Mac Market? I think so, yeah. We'll oh, you do? <laughs> animals around well, anymore. that's what we got to figure out, too, okay. is what the food requirements will yeah. be. We but. do still take him to the beach. Yep. He likes that. Cat at the beach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People are all okay. is that a cat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> All right, I'm losing it here. Oh, yeah. You guys are so amazing. Oh, uh, what a story! I mean, um, I, can you find anybody else? Can I find anybody else that's done what you've done? I doubt it. Um, bits and pieces. Bits I mean, and yeah, we, we're dealing true. with such mm -hmm. a big building that it uh -huh. became a very mixed use space. But I mean, there's yeah. food cart pods that are popping yeah. up all there's over the food place. Halls, there's Pine Street Market halls. in yeah. Portland. Yeah, yeah. I meant your whole thing of going on the road. Oh, oh doing all that. Searching. Yeah. Now, did you look for other? Did you have other places that you almost kind of thought, well, this might work too? Um, I mean, growing up in Nebraska, yeah. I just dreamed of California. Uh -huh. That's just kind so of so that was a pull. That was a big pull for me, and so we actually yeah. took a trip. We drove down there two winters ago when it was so rainy. We, it's hard to live in that trailer in the rain. Um, so we went down south and did the whole California coast, and it is beautiful, but it just didn't. It just one, one the tax and everything that hits when you go down yeah. there, but also you get so used to the green and the beauty up here. Yeah, uh, that's true. Versus, yeah, yeah, California, but. It was just the people and the small town feel, kind of like Nebraska. Yet you're still near the ocean and still. A lot yeah, to there's do out something here. really just... familiar about Oregon to us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's the agriculture or just 
friendly faces. Yeah. yeah people say hello to you in the street. That didn't happen in Seattle a lot. No. You'd pass someone in your hall and they wouldn't even act like you were there. But here, everyone <laughs> friendly. is very yeah. friendly. Very I want to ask you one yeah. last question. Mm. What what drives you to what drives you to do this project? What do you what has been pushing you? What do you hope for? Yeah. Um, I have always been like a host my entire life. Back in elementary school, I was hosting the Super Bowl party, mm. hosting the Halloween parties. I just always want to gather people together mm. and kind of create that experience and memory. Um, so that that is very much what this project is for me, and that's what that's what motivates me. I can't wait. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you for uh, I know everybody yeah, watching is really excited to come and see what you're going to do. Great, yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. <laughs>